Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan special. I hope you're having a very, very blessed and very, very spiritual Ramadan. And inshallah, may Allah accept all of your deeds in this special holy month. Joining me today is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamualaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi I hope your fasting is going well and not struggling too much. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Sheikhna, let's go into. Um, you know, performing fasting because it's not just I stop eating and drinking. There's a lot more to the, the fast, isn't there? Inshallah. A'udhu billah as al alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad. Well, with regard to fasting, as I've mentioned in the previous episodes, that it is a worship and the first thing comes with regard to fasting is the intention, niyyah. And the intention and the niyyah should be to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. That's very important with regard to fasting. Okay. And the rest of the ibadat and worships. Uh, that we have to have this intention that I pray before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do the fast, I do the hajj, the tawaf, and, and so forth for the cause of Allah. Um, so I have the niyyah for the cause of Allah and devotion and ikhlas and no riyah, not to show off to the others, for example. And with regard to the month of Ramadan, you do the niyyah, of course. Um, I mean, um, as I've mentioned, qurbat Allah ta'ala. And you have to make sure that um, when you fast, it's not for the purpose of... Um, going on, on to diet for example or for those who go hunger strike in, in prisons for example okay you do the siyam and fasting for the cause of allah so what you're saying is that in ramadan if you are not eating between fajr and maghrib for any other reason apart from uh kurbatan illallah this does not substitute as a fast for ramadan well other types of fasting that do not have the this type of inten intention, seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than such intention would not be considered uh, fasting. Okay. Be it a mustahab fast or, or a wajib fast, fasting. Mm -hmm. For example, somebody who goes on a diet or hunger strike. Or even he refrains from eating and drinking from the Adhan al-Fajr to Adhan al-Maghrib. Okay. Just to keep himself, you know, happy without eating, without spending, for example. He wants to save money, for example. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't want to uh, spend on breakfast and lunch, for example. Without having the intention of qurbatan illallah ta'ala would not be considered as fast. Be it a mustahab or wajib. Be it in the month of Ramadan or not other than other days of the year. You must have this intention for the purpose of uh, qurbatan Allah ta'ala. That's important. And um, so the intention must be present at all time from the beginning of the fast, from the Fajr time, till the end of the Maghrib Adhan. That's mm -hmm. important. I have, I have to preserve and keep this fasting intention all the way down. Any intention that you make to break the fast during the day, that will make the psalm and the fasting void. So you have to make okay. sure that the, you preserve and you keep and mm -hmm. re retain um, the intention of fasting all the day the Maghrib time. That's very important. Because some people think, oh, well, I'm going to plan to eat. Khalas. I'm going to break my fast. Okay. That intention that you want to break the fast will void the, fa the, the oh, siyam. Wow. Exactly. Even, even before you... Even before you eat. Exactly. Oh, wow. You have to make sure that you keep, keep this intention all the way from Fajr to Maghrib. Wow. wow. MashaAllah. Also, Shaykh, you were saying that fasting is a type of ibadah and every ibadah has the, you know, has the intention. We also know that there is a prerequisite of being tahir. Is that the same as well with fasting? Do you have to be tahir? Do you have to be in wudu or anything like this? Well, being tahir, inshallah, we'll come to the conditions of what validates the fasting okay. uh, in more detail, inshallah. 
Um, wudu is mustahab at all times. You wake up, you do the wudu, you want to read Quran, you do the wudu, mm -hmm. mustahab. You want to go out to study, to work, you do the wudu. Um, but for the month of Ramadan, you have to make sure that you're pure from uh, the janab, the hadath, okay. this uh, situation of, of janab. So you have to make sure that you have the ghusl of janab before Adhan al-Subh and Adhan al-Fajr. That's very important. Okay. And then you can Go make the, the intention knee. and uh -huh. you enter the fasting day with a pure body uh, from the janab. Inshallah. And likewise for the, for the, for the ladies, uh, their hukum as well. Likewise, um, uh, with their periods, as again, they have to be tahir and pure. Okay. So they start the month of Ramadan or that day specifically uh, in pure. Okay. And the intention, the niyyah, this is wajib in order for the fast to be valid. Yes? Of course, as I've mentioned, one of the main criteria of fasting is that you have the intention mm -hmm. that you make this intention of fasting before, before Adhan al-Fajr, as I've mentioned. Okay. So before you start the day with fasting, you have to have the intention before Adhan al-Fajr. And how do you say the intention? Well, do you have to actually utter it or is it in, in, you know, in your heart and in your mind is enough? Or do well, you have to actually utter the words? It is not mandatory to utter and say the, um, uh, the niya. For example, I shall fast today, for example. You don't have to say it. Just to keep in your mind um, and refrain from eating and drinking on that day. That makes the niya. Mm -hmm. that, that forms the niya. What is the niya? Is to refrain from eating and drinking yes. from Adhan al-Fajr to Adhan al-Maghrib. That's it. Awesome. It's done. Awesome. So you don't have to uh, sit down and, and make that intention. Uh, that I'm going to start you know, refraining from eating and drinking from mm -hmm. the Fajr time. And then you repeat it again in your mind or you say you utter it. No, yes. you don't have to just to uh, uh, keep things, things simple and just um, have the intention. Qurbat Allah Ta'ala, that's awesome. simple. And you just refrain from eating and drinking. Okay, so what about the time that you make the niyyah? Do you have to make this right at the end after you've eaten, uh, you know, your four suhoor? Or can you make it before that? Or does it have to happen right when the adhan starts? But when do, should you recite the, uh, or make the intention? The intention, as I've mentioned, it must be before adhan al-fajr time. Okay. So before the mu'adhan says, Allahu Akbar, you must have made the intention for the fasting on that day. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Because siyam and fasting is a complete set of um, ibadah that begins from Adhan al-Fajr till Adhan al-Maghrib. If you ignore the, the intention and you say, well, I, I'm going to wake up, let's say, by the sunrise, and I'm going to make the intention by the sunrise, no. That will make your, your fasting void. You have mm -hmm. to make sure that you did the intention for the fasting before the Adhan al-Fajr. That's very important. Because it's a complete set, it's a complete uh, duty and ibadah that begins from the Fajr to the Maghrib. That's very important. It's one set, it's one of uh, ibadah, duty, that you have to accomplish and offer to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the end of the day. So you can't uh, ignore part of the day and then you start your siyam intention, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning. No, it's too late. What if someone wasn't aware that the intention was wajib? Never mind just the intention. What if someone isn't aware of certain things that make the fast invalid? Um, so if someone didn't know that, or if I do this or that, my fast is battered. And uh, especially the intention. I didn't know I had to make such an intention. Everybody else was just doing it. I was just going along with it. Um, does that make the fast void or not? Well, basically, there's no need for the individual, for the one who wants to observe fasting, to sit down and think and brainstorm all the, the facts and the criteria that makes the fasting invalid. So he sits, sits down and thinks about eating, drinking, uh, such and such. He brings all the muftarat and the acts that breaks the fast. No, just in overall, just knowingly that I am fasting qurbatan illallah ta'ala and to refrain from the muftarat in overall, yes. that's fine, that's enough.
So just a general niyyah that I'm refraining myself from breaking the fast um, during the daytime. And that should be sufficient. You don't have to remember and brainstorm everything <laughs> that uh, they actually break the fast. So that's the requirement. Okay. And is the intention supposed to happen daily? Can I do one intention for the whole month of Ramadan? Now, there are two types and ways for the niyyah of fasting for the month of Ramadan. Okay. Number one is to make the intention of fasting from, for the entire month, from the beginning of the month. So let's say tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan, for example. And the night before the first day of Ramadan, I do the intention that I will fast the whole month of Ramadan, the entire month of Ramadan. That should be sufficient. That's one of the ways and methods that you make the intention. One intention for the whole month. Okay. So you don't have to repeat the intention every night uh -huh. and to keep it in your mind. Khalas, you, you made the intention for the whole month. You wake up every night, you eat the sahar, sahur, and then you pray for Salah Fajr and you sleep. Khalas. Yes. You are refraining yourself from eating and drinking and you had the intention from the, from the beginning to complete month the whole from month. Ramadan. Exactly. Okay. That's the, the first way. The second way is to make the intention in every night. Okay. Every night of Ramadan. I will wake up in the morning. Exactly. Uh, for, the suhoor. for the suhoor, you wake up, you eat the suhoor, you make the intention for this day, particular day, mm -hmm. and then you enter the day with, with the fasting um, of that day. And then the next day, the same thing. The night before the sahar, you do the niya again. So it's up to you. You can make whatever choice you want and you pick up one of the types of intentions. Ascent. Sheikhna, what about if, because you know we have a, a situation sometimes that is tomorrow the first day of Ramadan or not and let's say that I follow a marja who said tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan so I have my near to keep the first day of Ramadan uh, a fast on the first day of Ramadan and then later on the office says actually the, that first was not the first, that was the second. We made a mistake in regards to seeing the moon. Is, my, is that fast still valid? Uh, so I did the first of Ramadan. Accidentally, I fasted that on the second day of Ramadan. Is, so do I have to repay back two fasts, the first and second? Or is, the, is that one considered to be valid and I can continue and pay back one fast? Well, you see, uh, with regard to the intention of fasting the first day or the second day or the third day, it doesn't matter whatever you make the intention for the days, for the, for, for the numberings, for the counting the dates. Um, whatever you made the intention that I did the, the knee for the second day and, and it was the first day, mm -hmm. or vice versa, the first day and it, be, and it was the second day of the Ramadan, it doesn't matter whatever you make the intention um, as long as you have the intention of fasting the days of the month of Ramadan, it doesn't matter to be the first day or the second or the third. Mm -hmm. That is sufficient and accepted. So you don't have to worry about um, specifying the no numberings of the days, first, second, tenth, twentieth. Just the intention of fasting um, the day of the month of Ramadan would be sufficient. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this episode. And inshallah, you have the correct intention and the Sahih intention for this Ramadan, especially to help your soul purify itself and for you to re uh, receive the taqwa and the tawfiq, inshallah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.